Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to my new YouTube channel. This is the second episode, but actually the first one where I'm going to try and review and discuss any kind of kit that we use, why we use it, the benefits of, of using one over another and how we can get the best from that piece of kit. So today uh, I'm going to go through masks. The reason I'm going to, I've chosen to do masks on day one is because that's the first thing I bought when I started diving. But it was also the first thing that plagued my diving for quite a while. I bought what looked like to me the coolest mask. Then I bought another one because that one didn't work. But what didn't work is the techniques or the practices or the experience of my instructor to get the best from my mask. So basically every time I dived, whether it be in a swimming pool or it was in the open water, which started off as a quarry, or even in the sea, um, over in Fort Ventura, I was mask blind all the time. It kept fogging up, and I couldn't find a way to to prevent that. So I had two masks, and throughout the dive, I kept swapping from one to another. Turns out one was too big, one wasn't prepared properly, and neither were actually right for me. They didn't fit correctly. Um, so the aim with this video today is to show you how to find out which mask fits you better, the types of masks that we do have, and how to make them work for you. So little tips that I've picked up along the way that I pass on to students that I'm teaching now in order to get the best from their mask and understand the kind of money you should and perhaps don't need to spend to get a mask that works absolutely to its, its best ability for you which in turn will make your diving better. If your diving's better, you'll have more fun. And if you have more fun, you'll fall in love with it and have a passion for it like I do. And hopefully, you, you know, you'll know, you go on to be a great diver for quite a long time. So looking at the two styles of mask then, these are made of silicon rubber. Um, although one is made of black silicon rubber and one is made of clear silicone rubber. There's no real difference between the two other than the fact that the black, to me, feels a lot softer, more supple than the clear. It feels quite stiff, almost rigid. Um, so I, I don't dive with a clear one at all. I find the black one moulds to the, the sort of contours of my ageing face and um, I get a much nicer seal. Certainly now I've decided to grow a beard. It's If you look along the, no, the sort of nostril edge of the skirt of the mask, it's only very small. So I have to shave before I go in. Um, I have another friend who has a moustache and he puts a lot of Vaseline on his top lip. But for me, just shaving that top couple of millimetres to allow that skirt to sit tight allows for a much greater seal. And the fact that it is very soft and supple, it, it, it sort of moulds to that shape a lot better so I don't get a lot of water drifting in. Although I'm, I'm quite capable and confident to do a mask clear, I want to be able to get on with my dive without faffing with bits of kit and equipment that are not working right so get the fundamentals right have a shave get a mask that fits and works for you you can get on with your dive and enjoy it so what i found with a clear mask is great when the water is very colored or dark even so much like a night dive because it'll allow light in through here the more light that can hit you in the eyes the brighter or more you can view the downside to this clear mask I've found is over time it does yellow and looks looks a bit grotty and a bit tatty. Um, so for that reason, I like my kit to look clean um, and fresh and, and, and usable. Um, one thing I've noticed with this mask before doing this um, blog is it just has the letter T in the corner, which stands for tempered. Uh, what it doesn't have anywhere that I can find is a kite mark, you know, like the, the CE mark. Um, whereas this dark black mask, which is a low volume mask, so it's not sticking sort of two foot off your face. It's It does have the tempered lo and CE logo mark at the top. So you know for roughly similar money in the shop, this one definitely conforms to the standards that we as British divers would like to know that our kit conforms to. Therefore, you've got you know the best you can buy. 
Um, as, as far as, as money goes, they're roughly about the same price. I, from what I remember, this is about £35 and this one was £40. Um, I certainly remember my first journey to a, to a dive shop quite local to us and there was a range from about maybe a sale price at maybe £15, £20 up to well over 100 and it, it was all made of metal and all sorts of things like that. Um, so it looked fancy and quite technical, therefore might appear that, that you're more that way when you dive in but actually what you want is something relatively cheap in case you lose it um, relatively neutral um, in the water so if you were to lose it it would just stay in the water or fall quite gently so you'd have to have the opportunity to grab it whereas if it was quite heavy and it or, or buoyant if it was kicked off your face, which I, I have known and have seen and experienced, it would either float up to the surface very quickly, so you'd miss it and, and never find that. And equally, if it was quite dense and heavy, it would sink extremely quickly and your chances of finding it again could be very slim. So whilst we've got two styles of rubber, both silicon, clear and a black, we have several shapes. So another Hollis mask, this is the M4 very square and box like uh, very sl sort of slim profile um, so it's, it's it's reducing the amount that's coming off your face so you're not going to bang into things or catch things on it or reduce the chance of it getting kicked off whereas this one the M1 um, very similar in shape uh, sorry in style as in the black um, and the sort of quick release buckles on the side for the harness or for the strap um, just a slightly different shape. Okay then, what I tend to find is a nice clear lens, um, works really well for me. Uh, one of the first ones I did buy had like a coloured lens, more, much like a pair of sunglasses. Um, I remember my instructor saying, I can't see your eyes. And I didn't appreciate at the time why he would want to do that. Four years on, now that I'm an instructor and I've, I've, I've done quite a bit of diving, uh, in, the, in those four years and certainly taking newer divers in reading the body language of someone that you don't know very well can be quite hard but if you look into your your students eyes or even your, your dive buddy's eyes I reckon you, you you know you can be quite easily duped into thinking that they're okay by them answering questions going yeah yeah I'm fine or the body language but you look in their eyes and you can actually see whether they're comfortable or not, happy or, or nervous. So I think certainly as a student or a new diver, a clear lens will serve you in all kinds of diving that you're gonna do. This, this colored lens or, or um, polarizing lens or whatever it was, didn't benefit me in, in any way. Um, so I've got a couple of mates of mine that um, wear glasses quite a lot of the day and for that reason in the diving mask they've got a lens fitted now you can buy these off the shelf um, that must be like a standard um, and I believe that you could if necessary go to your optician with a particular mask and he'll make some lenses to fit that um, the downside with that is if they are quite specific and you were to lose it which this one particular mate of mine did they retail about 90 quid I think so either get laser eye surgery or just deal with the fact that you've got a very expensive mask and you need to look after it. In order to find the best mask for you, I'd suggest go to several dive shops. The easiest way to do that was at the dive show last year and there's so many different um, retail outlets that are there. You can try on several styles, several types, several brands of mask to find one that fits you. So yeah, we're, we're taught to spit on our masks to sort of clean them, but actually what it does is, is it breaks the surface tension within the microscopic pores of this lens that the warm moisture that you're breathing out and that, that develops in there that hits the cool side of that lens causes that condensation to form. Whereas if you spit on, it, it sort of reduces that. On the market nowadays though, the, a lot of people have got onto it. And this is one of them that we use. It's called Sea Gold. Very popular. Costs about six or seven pounds, and probably, depending on how much you dive and how how much you 
you think you need to use it can last about a year or a, like a diving season we swear by that so we've got a couple of bottles between us and um, it comes in different forms one's quite liquid and one's quite gelatinous so one tip I've come up with is using some like a whitening toothpaste the reason to use a whitening it has a little sort of gritty residue within it so you're going to polish the inside of your mask so the reason I'd use that as opposed to like a car polish like tea cut or something like that is that this is relatively safe for your face whereas the other contains chemicals that if they were to get around your eyes or mix with the water in the pond or the, the ocean not going to be very good for that so what I'd suggest is just squeeze out a little bit of your toothpaste just like a, a sort of pea sized amount on your finger and rub that all around the lens and I did this on and off for weeks but what you could do is just sit there whilst you're watching telly at night just sit there with it on your lap try and do it quietly so you don't annoy your wife and just really polish it in but it certainly over time does definitely make some form of benefit now all I can sort of gauge from that is the grit that's within that is polishing the surface of that lens slightly smoother in order to reduce those microscopic pores which then don't sort of bring in that moisture which then doesn't condense the main thing to take away from that is it's just time and effort into that lens now what I did once I've done mine is left it left it to dry so the moisture content within the the toothpaste that's on the lens reduces down so therefore becomes thicker and perhaps a little bit more coarse so left it for a couple of days came back to it and even left it on before I went for a dive so obviously if you look at that lens now it's not very clear but if, if I got to a dive site and it was on, I could give it a quick, another clean, rinse it in the water, and what washed off wouldn't be detrimental to either the water life, or if there was any residue left in, wouldn't be detrimental to my eyes or my nose or my skin. So that, that was probably one of the better tips that I'd learned. So further still from that, and, and quite a dramatic and an almost unbelievable thing that you're gonna do with something that you just spent quite a bit of money on and you've just started diving is to burn the inside of your lens and your mask. Now, I thought I'd just spent 80 pounds on this other other mask, my first mask that I'd ever had, or been, someone had spent that on me. Do I really wanna start taking fire to a mask that's gonna melt? Didn't believe them, till I saw it done. Um, and to be honest it was about three or four weeks ago I had um, a student in the water and his mask was horrific it just everything we did it just wouldn't stay clear he couldn't even see what I was trying to teach him and it was very bad visibility in the water anyway so I called the dive we got out and I got my little sort of burning tool and burned the inside of his lens and he was like oh my god the next dive we went in together with a bit of the, the sort of cleaning agent that we've got it was clear all the way through. So I just rinsed the mask out after doing the, the toothpaste treatment. So the reason I'd use this kind of lens, it's more like a, like a gas burner than your normal sort of cigarette lighter, is it's quite a, a directed and, and aggressive flame as opposed to one that's quite relaxed, if you will. Um, I'm sure if you if you got the other one, you'd understand where I was coming from. And all I'm gonna do is run it over the lens don't know well you can see that but when you do it what you can see is there's, there's a, there must be some form of film or, or it might be the moisture that's burning off but you can you can see an obvious difference around the lens as you do it um, it doesn't mark the lens and, and you'll notice I'm, I'm keeping it moving so I'm not overly heating any particular area but what I am doing is quite actively avoiding the outside edges of the mask so the rubber that would probably be damaged quite quickly so there's no color dip so, so no color change to the glass itself it it doesn't sort of make it look any different at all whatsoever 
But I can only assume it does one of two things. Either there must be a film of something that it burns off, or it it must melt the very surface of it microscopically. So so this this porous surface is no longer there. Um, and that for me, combined with the other things, was what solved that problem. So I'll just sort of run back through that. So you want a mask that fits you, a mask that is comfortable. So whether you go for the clear or the black silicone, whichever seems to mold and, and, and marry up to your face the best. Then you want one that's got the right kind of lens, so whether it be clear, it coloured, or it has some sort of lens in there to allow you to see better. Um, it's got to be tempered glass, and, and preferably with the CE mark on it. Ideally, you want a low volume mask, so one that's quite close to your face, not sat two foot out, where your mate's gonna kick you in the face and kick it off very easy. Once you've found that, you want one that's then prepped before you get in the water, and you'll, I'm sure you'll appreciate that once you go and do your first dive and you haven't done any prep, you'll understand why I suggest you do all these little little tips in order to make them make them work for you. So I would, cer I would certainly burn the inside of your lens first. I would then use some toothpaste to smooth the, sur the, the remainder of the surface off. And then every time you go diving, I would either spit or take some, some proper anti-fog and cleaner gel. The benefit of this is, as I said earlier, this skirt needs to sit really nice and snug against your face. And if, as I store mine, like I said, in in my fins, because my mask box is filled up with all camera parts, it's prone to getting quite dirty. So if you use a mask cleaner and put that on as you're kitting up before you get in the water, you, as you get to the water's edge and there's normally a bucket, whether it be on the boat or the, the side of the, the pond or whatever, or in the sea, you can rinse it off and it's not detrimental to your eyes, to your skin, or to your nose, and even more importantly, to the marine life. So, so if you do like what I'm trying to achieve with these videos in, in order to help um, new or inexperienced divers, if you've got any feedback for me, or if you've got any, any requests videos that you think you'd like to see, that, that when you were a new diver, that you'd perhaps wish you'd have been told, um, I'm quite happy to listen to all feedback and, and answer any questions, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Instagram, it's at Andy the Northern Diver. Thanks for watching.